Hey, ambitious dentist, welcome to Start Your Dental Practice, the show for existing and aspiring dentists to take your dental practice to the highest possible level. I'm your host, Jonathan Van Horn, CPA and ABV, founder of DentistMetrics.com. In every episode, we aim to demystify the how to start a dental practice problem by bringing on world-class dentists, influencers, and consultants in the dental industry to pick their brain about how to get past the barriers involved from going from no practice to being a practice owner to owning your own successful dental practice. Stress controlling your life. Chances are, if you're listening to this, you're more than familiar with the stresses of everyday life. Student loans, family obligations, personal issues, overcoming barriers with your practice, the list goes, it just goes on and on. It's really tough. On top of that, running a successful dental practice is hard. It demands your best 24-7 and then some. And at times, you may feel like giving up. According to recent statistics, one in every five Americans consider themselves extremely stressed. And that's of the general population, not just business owners like yourself. So the good news is you're not alone. Having talked to hundreds of practice owners, it's something each and every one of us deals with on a daily basis. The even better news is that you don't have to let stress run your life. It's entirely possible to change your relationship with stress and be insanely productive and happy. It's possible to build a business and life on your terms. So today, I'm excited to chat with Jen Butler, founder of Jen Butler Partners, a stress management and resiliency training firm. She's helped hundreds of dentist owners improve their relationship with stress and take control of their businesses and lives. And here are a few things you're going to hear about. The three common stress triggers and how to overcome them. The B word that might be hurting your practice. Why your problems are more common than you think. The science of stress and why it's so important. What to do when you're feeling off. Why the brain is built to focus on the negative and how to overcome it. And at the end of this episode, you'll learn how to get Jen's free guide, 10 Ways to Be Less Stressed. So be sure to listen all the way through this entire interview to get access to that. Now here's my interview with Jen Butler. Hello, ambitious dentist. Today, I have with us Jen Butler, the owner, creator, founder, CEO of JB Partners. Uh, I'm really, really looking forward to this episode, guys. Uh, You've heard me speak with a lot of people about numbers, analytics, business performance, uh, and a lot of one of the things that I, I talk about is the fact that, you know, there's just not enough focus on the owners of the of the practices. Um, focus on the uh, being the person at the top inside of a business and all the things that happen whenever you are the owner of a business. Uh, the importance of you know self-reflection, the importance of being able to be, uh, you know, being able to look at yourself and see what's going on in your life and really be able to get past the issues that come along with that. And one of the things that a lot of us business owners deal with, some better than others, is stress. And today's guest focuses a lot on solving the whole problem of stress in dental practices. And so today, again, I have us, uh, with us Jen Butler. Jen, thanks so much for coming on today. Thanks so much. I'm really excited to be here. So Jen, um, you know, I, you have a fascinating background, but tell me a little bit about how you landed inside of the dental industry. Um, I actually was uh, recruited back in 2011 um, and started working with a large DSO. I, uh, with many other people, had gone through a workforce reduction. Um, I lost my job. And... Um, uh, just, you know, my name was out there and LinkedIn and trying to make connections. And so, uh, interviewed and it fell into my lap. Um, but I do have a, a vast resume. I have a medical background. I was pre-med in college. I've been a paramedic and EMT, drove an ambulance. I worked in ERs and I was a certified nursing assistant, um, through college. So I've got quite a bit of that doctor mindset. Um, if you will, uh, and so landed in dentistry in 2011, started working with a large DSO as an internal practice management consultant and professional development coach for hundreds of, um, close to hundreds of offices and um, hundreds of doctors, all the way from startup to seasoned, uh, worked a lot with associates, 
new grads even before they got their license. So I have a, a vast uh, knowledge and experience of the gamut. And I loved it. I, I knew I wanted to stay in dentistry. I love dentistry. Um, they're my peeps. Um, working in working in dental, you gotta you gotta want it. You gotta dentistry isn't easy, so you have to be very passionate in order to have a longevity in dentistry. So I really just connect with the with the doctors. Very interesting. So whenever you went and started to work with all of these dentists, you know. Every time someone gets into an, uh, into a different industry, you have a medical background, but inside of dentistry, things just start popping out that you know all of these, these these people have 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 issues with. Mm -hmm. As far as what you were seeing, what was going on with with most of your clients and how you were able to help them? Uh, at that time, when I was with the the large DSO, I the docs were just overwhelmed. Uh, they and, and the stressors that the docs were were having are not vastly dissimilar from those docs in private practice. They just manifest themselves differently. Um, working with difficult patients, time management issues, working with demanding patients, leadership, you know, working with staff, that type thing. Um, I left the DSO and started to go out on my own because um, the stress was so vast with the dentists. And I really just wanted to help. I've been working in SMART, which is an acronym for Stress Management and Resiliency Training, uh, for over 25 years. I actually started in high school. And I've just had this passion and affinity for stress management. So I first I wrote my first curriculum in high school in stress and, and students. And ever since then, I, I've written dozens of stress management workshops and webinars and curriculum I've presented to tens of thousands of people on this on this issue and and how it relates to business and so um, I just when I left the large DSO I went out on my own to really focus on stress and dentistry and that how if dentists make stress and what stresses them out uh, a more of a forefront as opposed to an end result of their business approach, they actually can see higher tangible numbers um, and a return on investment. So that's how I came to dentistry and, and I've just blended my, my love for dentistry and my passion for stress management um, together and, and, it's, and it's needed in the area of, of dentistry. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I tell a lot of people, uh, you know, I had, um, you know, six years of business training through college, you know, with an undergraduate and a master's degree. Um, you know, the, if I knew the day that I got out of, 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 of my, my master's degree, I was going to be about a million dollars in debt. I was going to have, you know, so anywhere from five to 15 employees. Uh, and I was going to be ahead of all of these people trying to run a business. I would, I would have no idea where, what to do next. I would have no idea. I have no clue. Uh, and you turn that around and you say, okay, let's do the same exact scenario, add a couple of years of school probably, and change it to where it's not business training, it's all medical training. Mm -hmm. And it's just, just a, it's just a, the perfect storm of just, you know, uh, just chaos. <laughs> There's no other word for it. It's chaos. <laughs> And it's a culture uh, in dentistry. And what compounds that is there's a culture in dentistry to go it alone. I've written about this many times. Is that um, if you if you go on message boards and, or even uh, study clubs, you know there's not there's a false sense of community is what I call it, where the dentists when they when they go on the message boards and they say, hey, so I need a little bit of help here. Um, I'm thinking of hiring someone or I'm thinking of working with a, a professional, whether it be a consultant or a CPA or something like that. You know, other dentists will be like, no, you don't need to do it. Don't spend the money. You can do this yourself. And so it's, it's, it's in the culture of dentistry with doctors to, to send a message that if you don't go it alone, there's something wrong with you, you know, and building a business where not only do they have the life stressors of, you know, million dollar student loans and everything else, 
But now you've got all the business components on top of it. Um, and there's life, life too. <laughs> Most dentists coming out of school or within the first five years, they're married, have two young kids, right? So they're, they're trying to balance a lot of new things. And that is just on the scale of stress triggers. Uh, it's, they're right up there. And yet dentists are fixer people. You know, they're doctors. They, they tell themselves, I should be able to handle this. You know, I, I should be able to deal with what's in front of me and I fix people. I should be able to fix myself. And quite frankly, that's just, that's not the case. That's, mm -hmm. that's not how it works. And I've worked with docs that again are uh, right out of school and experience those early stressors mm -hmm. transitioning into world life dentistry. I've written a few articles on that. Um, and I've worked with docs that have been doing it for 30, 35 years. And it's unfortunate to me because I'm, I do see the longevity that, and, and the journey that they go through. And I will tell you that that doc just graduating college never thinks in 35 years they're going to be in the same boat, that they're still going to be a million dollars in debt, that they're not making the kind of money that they want to make, that they don't have control over their life, that they don't have time management skills. And if, if we don't do something now with the younger docs, Coming out of school, those first five years, if, if we don't do something to provide them some more support, increase their capacity for stress, increase their skill sets for business and leadership, those soft skills training, um, often too many of them 35 years down the road will look back and not have achieved what they wanted to achieve. Right. So. It's lonely at the top. I'll tell you this much, you know, you, you use the term building a business. And, yeah. you know, a thing I talk about a lot also is the fact that when you build a business, uh, if, if you're growing uh, or if you have any de you know, desire to grow, most of us, you know, want to keep going down the lines. You know, not all of us get fat and happy. Um, every time you grow, you're, you're almost having to reinvent that business. Absolutely. And you're having to try and figure out new problems every day. Uh, and all of those new problems come with more stress. And like you said, you know, having, having a young family, having kids, trying to balance all of these things together can be incredibly difficult. So as far, as far as, you know, helping people with solving these problems, how do you go about starting to address those for different people? Because I know whenever I started a business, I had heard about these things, uh, you know, um, and, but I always, I always thought of them as being a little bit, you know, foo foo, fluffy type, you know, feel good things that, you know, I always thought back to that, that Saturday Night Live uh, skit where the person said, you know, you're, you're happy and everybody likes you. And the person just says that every, every day. Uh, I can't remember who, who it was, but uh, I think that guy's actually, that was Al Franken, that was uh, the senator now. Um, but anyway, uh, how do you go about getting people to talk about that and, and getting to address that? How to go about getting people to talk about it? is more difficult than you would think. Because again, this culture and dentistry, not only do they go it alone, there's a sense of bravado. You know, if you go to study clubs, it's, oh, so what did you produce last month? How many new patients are you getting? And there's the sense of competition. And it's the competition that is killing the private practitioner. Uh, I just wrote a blog, it's gonna come out uh, Thursday on Dr. Mike Husband about how to outlast, outperform, and outsmart the group practices or the large DSOs. And it's written for the private practitioners or it's written for those docs who want to be that private practice owner. Um, because we do have to start being just honest and talk about it or at least create a safe environment to do so. Because right now, we're not. But I, I, how you start dealing with it, I've got five ways. And I tell, I tell docs that are, that are uh, either just starting out or just starting their business, or if they're wanting to take their business to the next level, like what you said, you are always reinventing yourself when you go to the next level. So there are five things. And the first one, the first characteristic is uh, adaptability. You must be able to adapt. And on a scale of one to 10, if your listeners were to answer with one being, I don't adapt, well at all versus 10 being, oh, I love change, change is the best, I seek out change, and I adapt to change without stress, 
Where are they on that scale? Very few people are out of 10. Very few people just in general, but especially dentists. Dentists like predictability, they like repeatability, they like scalability, right? Those are the three uh, key words for how to, how to grow a business. It's repeatable, predictable, scalable. Uh, and they like, they thrive on that, which really is the antithesis of adaptability. <laughs> if something is too predictable, then it's, it's ever changing and, and it's hard to be adapted. So adaptability. And there's some, there's some ways in order to increase your ability to adapt to change. First of all, there's some great books, there's webinars. I've got uh, documents and, and articles on my website, jenbutlerpartners.com, to increase your adaptability. Number two, agility. Now agility is, imagine, uh, imagine you're watching the um, Westminster show and you see those dogs and they're going through the agility course, right? And they, they just move with, with smoothness. You know, they don't see what's in front of them as a barrier. They are so agile that it's just an eight and a habit that when something is in front of them, they'll either jump over, go around, they manipulate, they manage, they navigate. So in dental business and with a dental practice, in order to reduce stress, one has to be agile. So a great way to think, to, to know if you're agile is if your front throws in an emergency patient, or throws in an extra patient on the schedule, and you already have a pack schedule. Does a dentist sit back and go, oh, great, that's wonderful, I'm so glad we got to see another patient, or do they flip out going, I don't know how I'm gonna see this patient, are you kidding me, why did you guys put this patient there? That's a great indication on how agile you are. The third thing is passion. Now passion, like you said earlier, foo-foo, you know, happy joy, right? But without passion, it makes going through the tough times meaningless. And research shows that when people go through something tough, but they know it's for a purpose, they know it's for a meaning, they know that it's gonna serve them for a reason, they have uh, uh, clarity and they have passion to get through it. It's essential. So, and it doesn't, I know dentists that are not passionate about fixing teeth, and that's okay. But they're passionate about their families, and they know that dentistry affords them the kind of lifestyle, schedule, to be home with their families, to go on vacation, to work four days a week, have three-day weekends, to run their own schedule, to, to have their schedule be like a sandbox, you know? You can change it up whenever you want. So without the passion, maybe it's passion for business, and dentistry is just the delivery, right? So there's, there's lots of docs that don't have necessarily passion for teeth, or fixing teeth, but, but what dentistry affords them, it allows them to be passionate about something. Then the fourth thing is tenacity. You must be tenacious. Building a business, whether you're trying to go from two million to four million, whether you're trying to go from 25,000 a month to 40,000 a month, whether you're trying to go from 50 new patients to 100 new patients, whatever your level up is, you gotta be a dog with a bone. You can't just try something once and go, okay, I quit. That's too tough. You know, and accept failure. In order to be successful, in order to um, get to the finish line, so you can start over and get to the next finish line, you have to be tenacious. And the last one, and, and almost the most important one, is your ability to partner. Your ability to, to be open to partner with professionals that will fill in gaps. Not everyone is everything at every time for everyone. You know, if you read any kind of good leadership book from some of the biggest business minds we know, 
they attest their success to the people that they surround themselves with, right? Steve Jobs, Bill Gates, uh, John Maxwell, Tony Robbins, you mentioned Tony Robbins earlier. Uh, these guys always are saying it's about being open and partnering with the right people, having hiring people and working with people smarter and better than they are. So those are the five elements that if your listeners were to think about, and they're the and, and if you, they score if they say no I'm not very adaptable I hate change change stinks <laughs> if you, if they're just in one if in just one of these areas then there's work to be done hey guys everyone knows that the number one barrier that dentists face today in becoming a fantastic business owner is knowledge. It's one of the reasons you're listening to this podcast is because you want to learn more about being in business or how to be a better business owner. So this episode is actually sponsored by the Ambitious Dentist Mastermind, where our core focus in this second semester of running this is to become a better business owner. The first semester is over and everyone that went through honestly can say that they are a better business owner today because of the fact that they went through the course. Well, this semester, we're going to even ramp it up more to where you're going to be able to learn so much more about the ins and outs of being a dental practice owner from a knowledge perspective. And so uh, they say that you are the average of the five people you spend the most amount of time with. We're actually upping the amount of people being admitted into this course to 15. So 15 people are going to be able to be able to be inside of this course to be able to become better business owners over the next few months. Now, very important, you have until November the 8th to apply for consideration to being a part of this mastermind group. We're going to be very select on who is actually going to be able to get in. So you have until November the 8th to sign up. If you're interested, just go to dentistmetrics.com slash master. That's D E N. T-I-S-T-M-E-T-R-I-C-S dot com slash master, or you can text the word a master with no spaces, A-M-A-S-T-E-R to 33444 to be able to learn more about what the course entails, as well as to apply to be able to ask questions to me and be able to go through the interview process to be considered. Again, we're being very selective of who we let in. Not everybody's going to be able to get in, but if you're interested, you have until November the 8th to apply to be considered. Uh, and so I urge you to go out and try. If you are a business owner, you're soon to be a business owner, um, and you you feel like you didn't, you, you have a, a knowledge deficiency, this is going to be the course for you. And I urge you to go and sign up today. Very interesting. So as far as each of these different five areas um, and how they relate to just leadership in general, uh, you know, I have a lot of docs that, when we speak, they have just this really, really, really tough time telling a hygienist, for example, um, that we need to be doing more perio. Yeah. Because this hygienist has been there for 25 years and they've done, they've done one perio a month for the last 25 years. And that's how, and it's only because of, you know, X, Y, Z, or in, in some, in some cases it's a zero a month. Um, if you have all five of these and are strengthening these five, do you feel like that's an area that will help develop that leadership skill so that you can actually tell that person to do a better job? Or what are your, what are your thoughts on that and how they relate to leadership? Absolutely. Because if you really get to the root of the issue about why that doctor isn't, and first of all, almost in every state, the doctor has to diagnose the perio. It's not the hygienist. So it's not, the doctor is, is what's called being a victim to that situation. Mm -hmm. But what is, what's the root problem? And I would say most of the time it's that they don't want the person to leave because they don't want to have to hire a new hygienist because they hate change, which goes to our number one adaptability. You know, how adaptable are you to hiring and, and maintaining new staff? And how adaptable are you to letting go of the ones that got you where you are today, but are not the ones that are going to get you where you want to be tomorrow? That, it's hard letting people go. It's, it's sad if you've worked with them for a long time. But a dentist has to decide what they want more. Do they want to, and, and 
here's where the unconscious mind come in, comes into play, is that we think, or the dentist will think it's the hygienist's fault, and they'll blame the hygienist. Well, she's not doing the perio. Instead of taking, uh, having a bit of self-awareness, um, self-reliance and introspection to say, well, I'm not, I'm not diagnosing the perio, which is what it legally is. I'm not diagnosing the perio because I'm too afraid that she'll leave and I'll have to hire somebody else. So I'd rather just stay with what I know because, you know, the devil you know is better than the devil you don't. Right? Isn't that that cliche? Mm -hmm. So... I would say it goes more to the adaptability portion. So tell, tell me about, you know, you, you mentioned uh, a few times now uh, self-awareness or the unconscious mind. Talk, what is the unconscious mind? Because you, you said that, that term, uh, and, you know, if I was listening in, I probably wouldn't know what that was. Okay. Thank you for that. Um, it's kind of like dentists talking to patients maybe about perio or profi, and where it's just so such common nomenclature for them. But um, so the unconscious mind, psychologically, we have we have our mind and we have our unconscious mind. Our unconscious mind is always running in the background, but that's where our fears and that's where kind of those those um, uh, uh, I call them gremlins, limiting beliefs. Uh, you what, know, what is a limiting belief? A limiting belief is where we say to ourselves, I can't do that because whatever, all right? It, we limit ourselves by, oh, I, I can't run a mile. There's no way I can run a mile. I've never run a mile before. I'll never be able to do it. So it's, and we say there are eight limiting, there are eight uh, identified type of thoughts that run in our unconscious mind that we are not aware of them. Other people are aware of them. Other people hear them. It's that self-deprecating language that we say to ourselves that we don't even hear. Uh, so, and it comes back to our stress response. See, our stress response is a biological internal process. That's it. It's biological. Stress is not mental, by the way. Um, stress is not psychological. Stress is medical and biological. And when people get back to understanding that in order to control our stress response, we have to be more aware of what's triggering it. Now, oftentimes in our unconscious mind, our stress response is always looking for dangers. That's what our stress response is actually for. It's to look for dangers ahead, but we don't know that it's going on. It's like, we're not, consciously aware that our brain is telling our lungs to think or that our our hands are moving my, I talk with my hands I'm not consciously aware that my brain is doing that so these types of things happen in the unconscious mind and well, so and so when a dentist let's go back to the hygienist so the, the the dentist going yeah well the hygienist is not doing the perio and she's not die you know she's not telling me whatever that I'm that is a doctor's way. First of all, it's a lie we're telling yourself. We tell ourselves lies all the time, the brain does. Um, or it's a story we tell ourselves because the brain cannot function without having information. It just doesn't function. It, it just can't function. It always is trying to fill in gaps. Well, our brain is physiologically wired to think negative. That is a, that's a biological fact and physiological fact. It's wired to go negative, which is why the stories we tell ourselves, especially at two o'clock in the morning when we worry, um, they're all negative. They're most, it's called, uh, uh, hold on, it's called uh, catastrophizing. I, I don't know why I couldn't think of it. It's called catastrophizing or awfulizing. It's one of the eight thoughts in our unconscious mind. So catastrophizing or awfulizing, but that's part of the stress response is to the, well, what if this happens? It's to go to the worst case scenario so that we can either run away from it, fight it off type thing. Um, did, I, have, I, I, have I taken you down too far of a bunny trail? No, no, it's, it's perfect. I actually had a discussion with someone just the other day 
that they said, you know, I'd really like to, I was talking about their goals. Like, what are your goals for your practice? What are your goals for your business uh, over the next, you know, year, three years, five years, 10 years? He's like, you know, I'd really like to own multiple practices. And he's like, you know, I own this, this spot of land. It's, I think it's going to be a really good spot to, to do a, a practice. But, you know, I, I've really wanted to do another practice, but it's just, it just isn't going to work for me. And I said, you know, well, why isn't I going to work for you? He's like, well, you know, as far as what I'm seeing, I just don't think that the numbers would work out and all these other things. And I said, well, do you know of anybody else in your area that has multiple practice centers? And he's like, oh, yeah, I know a ton. He's like, I always get frustrated because I don't think they're any smarter than I am. But they own all these practices and they can do all these things and they have bigger businesses and everything like that. And I was just like, you know, so if you're out there listening and you're hearing that, what I'm describing is this actor had a limiting belief of the fact that he couldn't do it because of the fact that he'd, he'd, ma- he'd done it in his head that it wasn't going to work for him just because it was just not, the, the stars weren't aligning for right. him. Well, and there's even a deeper, and, and that's one of the things that I do with my coaching services. You know, there's a deeper reason why this, this doc either has a fear of failure, but most dentists, quite frankly, don't have a fear of failure. They have a fear of success. If they had a fear of failure, see, people with a fear of failure don't often take risks, don't push themselves very far, but people with a fear of success, which will push themselves just far enough. So most dentists will open up, you know, they go to dental school, they pass their boards, they will open up one practice, but then that second one, ooh, that's just, that's just too much. And that, again, our fear takes place in that unconscious mind. There's that roadblock there, and we don't know what's blocking us. So we tell ourselves a story that it's the numbers. The numbers just aren't there. But it, yet, if we were to, did you, my favorite question, or one of my favorite questions is, how do you know? There's a difference from knowing and thinking. Like, how does this dentist know the numbers don't work out? Yeah. Knowing comes with evidence. Knowing comes with proof. Knowing comes with uh, awareness. Thinking about something. Well, I think I think it's nice outside. I'm in Phoenix right now. I could look outside. Not a, not a cloud in the sky. Beautiful blue sky. Light breeze. I can think it's 110, or I can think it's 80. But I don't know. I'm inside in the air conditioning. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, you, you mentioned about the fear of success. Um, the, the way that I've always, you know, and again, you, you tell me, I, I hear a lot of practice owners and they talk about the money aspect and it's almost like there's guilt involved with being yeah. successful. Yeah. Is that something you find to be common? Very common. Very common. See, the thing about dentists, and this is why I love working in dentistry so much, is because most dentists, and I I do some assessments, and uh, one of the assessments that I do is the Energy Leadership Index Assessment. And so it's an attitudinal assessment. It's the most reliable and and, uh, valid attitudinal assessment that's out there. And the reason I like attitude assessments is because you can change your attitude. Attitude is just a combination of your thoughts. It's how you perceive the world. Your personality, uh, personality assessments, yeah, so what? I know your personality, but that doesn't do anything for me. So I'm not a big fan of, of personality assessments. Uh, but anyway, so this, this attitudinal assessment, and I've done it with hundreds of docs, and they have very similar patterns. And so most of the docs come from heart. They really do. They are of service. They uh, care. They truly do care about their patients. They care about, and this is not a, a fini, or a, just with women it's, or female dentists. It's all dentists, right? They're dentists because of that passion that they have. They want to serve their patients and their staff. And, and so when you've got, I forgot your question. I'm sorry. No, it was, is, do you feel like a lot of people are uh, have oh, like, guilt? Yes. I'm sorry. So when people make a lot of money or even what they think might be a lot of money, uh, off of caring for people, there's a lot of guilt 
You know, that maybe they're, they, but it's about their own value. It's about their own self-worth. It's about their confidence and their self-esteem, which again is internal. You know, it's, oh, I, I, you know, I don't need to charge $800 for a crown. I'm making a lot of money off of that. I'll discount it to 650 or five, 500. They're not discounting it because the patients are saying that's too much. Or that's ridiculous. Well, they might be saying that, but, <laughs> um, but they, it's, be, they're discounting it because they don't value their own worth. And so they feel guilty. And how do you improve that self-worth with, with someone who may not even be aware that they're doing that, but that's, but what, that's what they're doing. Or, or, and there's also sometimes I'll see some, some doctors that will, they'll impose what they think that the person can afford as well um, based off of what they think they're, what they, what they, what they can afford. Cause they don't want to be, you know, again, they don't, they, they feel guilty about taking this person's hard earned money. Yeah. They, um, so how do they get over that? Well, that's through coaching, you know, again, because that is, that's about personal self development and that only happens through coaching. You know, it, it dentists don't need their, someone who's looking for that doesn't need a therapist. It's not a, a therapist or a counselor takes you from dysfunction to function, mm -hmm. right? That's the reality of counseling or therapy. If you have a dysfunction in a relationship. If you have a dysfunctional belief about yourself, so it's causing you uh, a diagnosis, whether it be anxiety or depression or something like that. Counseling and therapy is an excellent modality. But even a counselor or therapist will say, okay, once you're functional, once you're going to work and you know, you're able to live, then they're done. That's where the coaching modality comes in, where you're functional, but you want to be optimal. So you either want to live an optimal life, you want to have an optimal business, but you're functioning. So to get over those hurdles, it is about addressing the mindset. It's not about the foo-foo kind of stuff. It's about the self-awareness, self-development. Um, and I can tell you the clients, all of my clients that I've coached around the mindset and the attitude and everything else, they are making more money just by just by addressing their stress and their thoughts and their attitude, they're adding a hundred thousand dollars a month in production. See, there's tangible results to this. It's not just about living life and being happy and going to work all skibbity dippity. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not a foo -foo, I'm not a foo foo kind of person, but there are tangible results attached to not dealing with your fears and your roadblocks, like that dentist who won't open up the second practice. He is limiting his potential. He's not living an optimal life because of something going on internal. Oh, yeah. And, and just so everyone out there knows, um, and this is, you know, again, it's something that is not talked about enough in business, but uh, any of the, the, the greatest entrepreneurs and business owners in the world have someone there to kind of keep them in check and to help them get past all of these things. Because... Absolutely. You know, as many times as you being a business owner, you sat there and thought, you know, I don't know the optimal way of doing this, <laughs> but I'm going to try something to make, to see if it works. Um, doing that day in and day out is what being a business owner really is over time until you've experienced everything and none of us are going to experience everything. Uh, and doing that over and over again can create a lot of issues like internally whenever you have some type of, like you said, like a trigger, like a negative trigger or response to you trying something and then it not working out. For a lot of us, like me, myself included, that can create like a, 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 a fear of doing that thing again. And yes. that fear, it can, it can build up kind of like, I guess, uh, to, to only the dentistry, like decay. It can just build up over time to where it just creates bigger and bigger issues to where your, 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 your mindset can be just completely degraded. So guys, one of the things that I want you to think, to know and, 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 and realize right now is that the best entrepreneurs and people in the world and business owners in the world have someone that can help, that helps them be more aware of themselves to, so they know that they're, you know, what they can and can't do. Uh, and Jen does a, a, a great job of explaining all of these things uh, that can that can help you become a better business owner um, and, and focus on on yourself. So uh, you know, guys, I, I want you to reach out to Jen 
and, and thank her for coming on the show today to talk about the things that she talked about today. Uh, it's something that is not talked enough about enough in dentistry. And I wish it was, I wish it, I wish that this was, you know, a lot of people would give me, uh, uh, they, they express grief that there's no business training in dental school. I wish there was this kind of training in dental school. Okay. Yeah, I agree in dental school, but the great thing about your audience now is now they know and they can do something. See, one of my favorite quotes from Maya Angelou is, when you know better, you do better. So I invite your, your anyone listening to this to go to my website. There's, I, I give away tons of information. You know, I, 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 uh, I, I want docs to have the right information at the, exactly the right time. And, um, and so hopefully now that they know better, they can do better. Fantastic. Well, Jen, thanks so much for coming on today. Is there anything that we, that, uh, that we should have covered that we haven't covered in, in regards to, uh, you know, the, the, the stress involved in, in dental practices today? Oh, goodness sakes. You know, <laughs> <laughs> do, we have, do we have another 25 hours? Or to, to <laughs> yeah. no, one, one of the things I, I'll just leave you with, uh, with your uh, audience members is that 86% of dentists in the United States, 86% self-proclaim moderate to severe stress. Your audience members are not alone. They're not. And however they're feeling or wherever they're thinking, um, they're, they're, it, and if they're not ecstatic or excited about where they're at, if they're not optimal, uh, they there is someone to reach out to. There is someone to help. So, fantastic. What what was the the URL of your website? It's jenbutlerpartners.com. Fantastic. Well, guys. Uh, if anyone has any, that has any specific issues that wants to reach out or anything like that, is there a good way for them to be in, be in contact with you? Yes. Uh, my email address is Jen, J E N at Jen Butler partners.com. And I give out my cell phone number, uh, 623-776-6715. Docs can call me. Um, I, I give out my cell phone number because, uh, those docs that are in burnout or they're just looking for really some serious help, they maybe are in a darker place, I give my cell phone number out so that they know that they can, when they dial that number, someone will be on the other end of the phone to answer it. Very good. Well, Jen, thank you again for so much for, for coming on today uh, and as well as what you do for the industry. I think it's very important. Thank you so much. A special thanks to Jen for sharing her strategies and tips to deal with stress. It's not always easy, but it can be managed. And as a special bonus for today, Jen has generously shared her amazing 10 ways to be less stress report. I'll definitely be trying some of these out myself uh, and you'll, I'll know you'll get a ton of value out of it as well. So to get that bonus, simply text practice to 33444. Again, that's practice to 33444 or visit startyourdentalpractice.com slash bonus if you're outside of the US. You'll also receive updates on the latest episodes of Start Your Dental Practice, helpful tips for owning and running a practice, and promotional opportunities direct to your inbox. So that's it for today's episode, but that doesn't mean that the learning and implementation have to stop there. I've created a free report called The 15 Numbers That Will Make or Break Your Dental Practice. This report has been downloaded over a thousand times by dental professionals. So if you want your free copy of this report that's going to outline what the most important numbers are in any dental practice, and it also includes how to look at your numbers, how to set goals, has a whole slew of really important information that is the culmination of all of my experience as a dental, dental CPA, then just go to startyourdentalpractice.com slash free gift. That is startyourdentalpractice.com slash free gift. And so that's it for today, Ambitious Dentist. Again, I'm Jonathan Van Horn, CPA and ABV. I'll see you next week with another world-class practice owner or consultant that will help you start your very own dental practice. Thank you guys so much for being a part of the Start Your Dental Practice community. If you enjoyed today's episode, please do me a favor and go to startyourdentalpractice.com slash iTunes to leave your honest feedback and review on iTunes. It's going to help me create a better experience, a better show, a better podcast 
for you, the ambitious dentist. Your feedback really does help, regardless if you like the show today or not. If you didn't like the show, let me know, because it's going to help me create a better show and podcast for you. Lastly, if you know of anybody that would benefit from today's episode and today's content, today's guest, please feel free to share with them on social media or through email.